guest on the Tom O'Brien Show. Uh, this is going to be Steve Rhodes. Steve Rhodes is the author of the Mastering Probability newsletter. He also hosts the Trader's Edge on at 11 a.m. Eastern Time right here on TFNN. Uh, again, check this out. As I said last week, I'm going to say it again. It is just the, the footnotes of what you need. It goes in depth. You're getting briefed, right? And this is what's so fantastic about it. It is so hard to collate all of the information that is going on in the market. I mean, look at how on fire it is right now, you know? You have to do that if you want to be a pretty attentive trader uh, with every indice, right? You need to understand these kind of different technicals that are going on, and that can just be extraordinarily overwhelming. And that's where something like mastering probability comes in. This is a fantastic newsletter. Uh, again, I want to say, uh, if you've never subscribed to it, you get a 30-day money-back guarantee on all first-time subscriptions. If for whatever reason, it doesn't work for you, but I'm going to bet that it is. Uh, Steve, how are you doing? Doing great. Hey, great to be uh, back on the air. Definitely. Kind of a sense of getting back to a little bit of normal. Sure. Um, you know, I know where I'm at on the East Coast. Uh, not that we really were impacted directly by the hurricane. It was all the tornadoes. Yes. Um, which was really wild because, you know, the, the not necessarily a cool thing, but the great thing about a hurricane is you can plan. Yes. Um, you know, and DeSantis has done a great job in managing the hurricanes and getting things as best as he can, um, uh, you know, pre-positioned so that once the storm passes, we can try to get back up and running. It takes time, obviously. But really, the great thing about it was, you know, I think we lucked out. I don't know what the total death toll is. Yeah. I think it's in the 20s or something like that. You know, one is too many out there. Absolutely. Uh, but it's certainly the, 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 you know, you can't, you don't know when a... Uh, a uh, earthquake is going to take place right. and you don't know when a tornado is necessarily going to take place i was watching luckily the news stayed up here um and and many of the tornadoes were about 10 miles to my west or about 10 miles to the the north out there but there was one moment in time when i say a moment i'm talking about within 60 seconds where there were six tornadoes on the ground in this area it was and that was not all the tornadoes just in this you know let's say 20 mile uh, square 20 square miles uh, around this uh, level out there. Mm -hmm. You know, tornado, you, 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 you can't run from it. Hopefully right. you're outside and you can see it, you know, and then you try to uh, find cover. Um, so, you know, obviously all of our hearts go out to everybody that's impacted by these storms totally. out there. But, uh, you know, it does slowly get back up and running, which helps the psychology of it all. I've been dealing with these storms for 41 years. Um, so, uh, and, and I still stay here and look, I'm on the water. So sure. I know I'm subject to, and if a, if a cat, look, we get out of Dodge. Um, you know, if there's going to be a direct hit, I don't really care what category it is, even though I've got a whole home generator. That's for afterwards. Yes. You know, but during the storm, you know, you just, and, and take, and how that storm cut across the state, right? Just drove right up I-4, uh, so it seemed like, right? From Tampa into Daytona. I had friends in Orlando who were entirely flooded out from this. And that's, again, on the other side of the state, yeah. you know. It's yeah, certainly it's unfortunate. Well, I'm glad you just, made it out right, and I know a lot of our Tigers were okay, even though they lost some power. So that's it's very sure. good to hear. So yeah, but good to be back because obviously gets all of us kind of back into getting back to normal, so to speak. You know, you mentioned the newsletter and just all the correlations um, yes. that we need to try to take a look. We can't just be myopic and take a look at one thing. And so, kind of a good lead-in to what I want to uh, discuss with you today. And really, today's discussion was generated from a question that came in this morning uh, for the uh, Trader Z show. And that question was basically saying, how can these markets move higher with all the uncertainty that's going on over in the Middle East? You know, we all know that Israel's going to make some type of, of uh, uh, take some type of action. I right. think in the news today, I'm seeing that the U.S. is sending over um, – you know, we're going to have boots on the ground there. Not that we don't already, I suppose. Yes. But more boots on the ground there. You know, the, it's, the situation is escalating. And so the question, and it's a very valid question um, with these markets moving higher, is how, how can that be? With so much uncertainty, how is that possible? So I thought we would take a quick peek at that. And then before we go, I want to be able to share with listeners a trade right now that they could consider. And I'll, and I'll go through that. Certainly. So, uh, so let's, let's begin. Um, you know, I like to say, how do you know where you're going if you don't know where you've come from out there? And so that's what we'll apply to uh, today's chart. So let's start with World War I and how the Dow traded. So I've got the Dow data that goes back to 1896. And World War I began on July 28, 1914. 
four and a half months later. And so if you take a look on the left-hand side of the chart, I've got noted, here's a monthly chart that we're taking a look at. So I can get a little bit more data and a better feel for the bigger picture. So we can see where when World War I began, we can see that gap to the downside. Now, the U.S. stock market was closed for four and a half months. That's always a possibility if World War III were to start. So just something for people to consider. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but it did happen in the past. If it happened in the past, it most certainly can happen again. Now, um, when the U.S. stock market did open, it rallied. Uh, you can see here it opens on December 12th. That was the bottom, and then it rallies right until it creates this little TD9 count top. That's one of the patterns that I teach subscribers. The market takes a pause. It moves lower, resumes higher out here. We've got Congress that. So what's also important really about this chart and that I'd like to drive home to folks, is uh, Jacob, is that if we take a look at when the U.S. got involved with World War One, which was on April 6th, uh, in 1917, that's when Congress went ahead and declared war on Germany. What we can basically see is that was pretty much the top of the market at that point in time. Yeah. And then we move lower. Now, one of the patterns, one other pattern that we take a look at is the A to B equals CD pattern. And here this for more than a one to one A to B equals CD pattern. How I identify when that pattern completes is a bullish or bearish reversal candle would form. In this case here, because the market was moving lower, it was a bullish hammer candle. And that was... Um, so that formed a, a bottom pattern here. And then we can see that on November 11th, maybe about uh, 10 months later, uh, we can see that that's when World War II ended and price moved higher. What was going on here, this was global capital out of Europe coming into the U.S. Somebody can say, well, why did the U.S. rally? out there because we didn't have any boots on the ground here. Um, global capital or large capital or smart capital knows you don't want to be parked when there's a war going on inside your country. And the reason is because those wars have got to be funded. They're going to be funded by either increased taxes, by increased inflation. Not that that funds a war out there, but you can experience just simply through shortages. Yeah. Um, and so uh, uh, capital doesn't want to be there. And so where was it going to shift to? Well, at that stage in time, it certainly was inside the U.S. So we saw that was going on inside of World War I. So the summary really of all that stuff right now, first patterns work because we took a look at TD9 counts. We took a look at A to B equals CD patterns out here. But uh, once the U.S. enters a war, that's when we typically see a move to the downside out there. In this case here, uh, when we take a look at where World War I uh, out here, we can see that it formed a, a roads momentum indicator and a wave seven or letter G bottom. And that then finally began the rally. So, again, another sign that we want to be paying attention to the patterns that are out there. So with regard to World War II and how the Dow trade, I see, geez, I've gone a little bit too long No, no, here. Steve, um, <laughs> keep going because we can keep you on to the next segment. This is fascinating stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. So when we come back from this break here, we're going to take a look at World War II. We're going to take a look at when Germany invaded Poland on Friday, September 1st, 1939. That's what all historians consider to be the beginning of World War II. And we come back here, if you take a look at World War II here, look at what happened in the U.S. A very nice bottom. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back with Steve Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup. I am joined by Steve Rhodes. Taking a look, Steve Rhodes is the author of Mastering Probability Newsletter. He's also the host of the Trader's Edge and is on 11 a.m. Eastern time right here on TFNN. Again, check this out. We have three options for you uh, regarding mastering probability. Uh, loading right now, we have 149 for one month, 695 for six months. That is a 22.26% uh, discount on it. And then for the one year, we have 11 95. That's going to save you $593. That is a 33.17% discount. I want to say for all first time subscribers, you get a 30 day money back guarantee. For whatever reason, it doesn't work out. We're betting that it is going to. Before uh, we went to the break, Steve was discussing uh, essentially why the US is doing so well right now, even though there's so much, at least the market, uh, there's so much uncertainty in the world. So we're taking a look uh, back through that in a historical context. Uh, we're looking about uh, at least with the world wars and how the market was responding during those times. Steve, please take it away. Yeah, and again, that question came about this morning by a uh, by subscribe by a viewer listener about uh, you know why is why is the S and P moving so much higher when yeah. uh, we know that there's going to be you know some Middle East continued Middle East tension out there. Here we're taking a look at the beginning of World War II. Now, in September the first, nineteen thirty nine, that's when uh, Germany invaded Poland. Take a look at that bar. This is a very first. It was a very wide range ranging bar with regard to distance that uh, price traveled. But look how price pushed down. It tested a swing point. 
that was actually a buy the D point pattern. I'll show that here in a few moments out here. Uh, but price pushes down and almost closes, almost closes at the high of the day. That is a very bullish signal. Now, that was on September 1st. We know that the first Monday in September, that was a Friday, the first Monday in September is Labor Day. And then the very next day is when the market opens. So keep that in perspective out there. Here, by the way, is that A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. So we already had a buy the D point pattern that had formed maybe, this is a daily chart, by the way, had formed uh, the prior week out there. And then simply that level was tested. It was rejected. Again, just a reminder that the patterns that we use and that we teach here at TFN, they really do work, even during highly emotional time periods out there. And then we get the uh, on September, uh, Sunday, September 3rd, uh, France and the British Commonwealth, they declare war on Germany. So it's just really heating up out there. And then the following day is when... Um, is when the uh, U.S. stock market reopens. And when it reopens, it uh, closes higher by 9.5%. That's a pretty big move out here. What are we at in the Dow right now? What would be a 10% move? 4,000 points or so? I mean, you know, <laughs> so just kind of keeping things in, in perspective out there. Again, this was another sign of global capital exiting Europe and moving here to the U.S. Now, right. what's what's nice about when I say patterns repeat, or they patterns work even in emotional time periods, the market topped on September 12, 1939, with a TD9 count top. And that was a top that lasted for quite some time out there. So again, these patterns work. Um, and so what I just want to say in summary, here I'm pointing out when uh, and everybody knows that uh, we entered World War II, the U.S. that is, on December 7, 1941, Pearl Harbor. And so I've got that identified. This is a weekly time frame chart. And so just like in World War II, when the U.S. entered the war, physically entered the war there in World War II, uh, one, Congress had declared war, you know, bringing Article 5 uh, into being out here. And here on December 7th, it was the very the next day when Congress went ahead and declared war on uh, on Japan out there. And we can see the price continue to move lower. So what I want people, really the question is, so one possibility is that we may not see a significant top um, until we until the U.S. enters World War III. Whether it does or not, that I don't know. But I do know, going back in this turmoil period of time that we're in, that's something to most certainly pay attention to. Um, if we take a look at global capital flow and what's going on right now, let's go take a look. So here, what I've got, this is the Dow, priced in all of the major currencies. And we're at a new all-time high today, Jacob, yep. priced in U.S. dollars. We're at a new all-time high in euros. We're very close to being a new all-time high in yen. We're at a new all-time high in Aussie dollars and Swiss, uh, Swedish krona, Great British pounds, Swiss francs out there, Chinese yuan. It's just the yen, which is very close to being at a new all-time high, and a Canadian loony, where or not. This is a sign. So here, if you take a look at what does that really mean? Stevie. That means if you're sitting over in Europe and your local currency is euros, you're more interested in how the Dow is trading in your currency than it is in somebody else's. But like you said, we've got to correlate things. We can't be myopic and only take a look at what's going on inside the US. Now you can, but my suggestion is that you don't because this right. is a global market that we're in with regard to stock markets, just with regard to everything. So here we can see capital that's flowing in from all the major currencies out there. What happens if we go take, like, I would call it some of the junior currencies. Now here I've moved from the Dow Jacob into the S&P 500. Um, actually, that wasn't the chart I wanted to take. Well, this is this is the S&P and it really shows us the same thing. But what I wanted to do with regard to the S&P is let's go take a look at how the S&P is trading in all of the major countries in the Middle East. See. So whether we're taking a look at what's going on in Kuwait, in Egypt, in Syria, in Iraq, uh, in Israel, in Saudi Arabia, you can see right now today, we are at new all-time highs. This, is, again, is a signal that global capital is moving into the U.S. So this is now, if we take a look at gold as an example, we're not at new all-time highs today in terms of U.S. dollars, but we are in terms of euros, we are in terms of yen, we are in terms of krona, we are in terms of loonie, in pounds, Swiss franc, Chinese yuan, and Aussie dollars, all of them. So if somebody is thinking that, hey, you know, the U.S. dollar, it, maybe it's getting ready to pull back, nice. I say you got to think twice because these are all buyers over here in all these countries, you know, inside those currency pairs out there. So it's just global capital flows. It's one of the aspects, one of the things that I do to correlate things inside of Mastering Probability. Subscribers get access to charts like this when they're pertinent. Right now, they're very pertinent. I think there's there's another pertinent chart. If it's okay, do you have any questions about what I've no, shared the, the, so far? Anything maybe no, that's I need fascinating. to re-review? Yeah. 
No, yeah, please keep going. This is so oh, interesting. Perfect. So I want to leave today with a trade opportunity that people can take a look at. And so if you give me a moment here, we're going to change screens. What we're going to do, we're going to go over to an eight panel screen out here. It really starts with a daily time frame and then all the time periods below. When we form a daily top or bottom, in this case here, we're looking at the 30 year treasury and the 30 year treasury actually on Friday formed a buy the D point pattern. People may re may be. Uh, remember when we took a look at World War One, we saw World War Two. We saw an A to B equals CD pattern that was confirmed by a bullish reversal candle. Well, on Friday, it was a bullish hammer candle. That low was tested today, and so far that has been tested and rejected. That's a bullish signal. A close below 119.23 would say that that sell that by the D point pattern failed. When we get daily bottom signals, and we're also going to form a TD9 count bottom today, what we look for on the intraday charts are bottom patterns out here. And we've got them for all these time frames, five hour, four hour, two hour, one hour, 30 minute chart, 15 minute chart, and 10 minute chart. And on the 15 minute chart, it formed a TD9 count top this morning. And that pullback was very mild. And we took that out just as you and I had come on the air here. It looks to me like the 30 year treasury is at least going to have a counter trend move. And I would suggest that that 30 year treasury get up to 122 or so. Steve. So that's my, that's my trade uh, for, for folks out there to consider. Thank you so much. That was fantastic. You, guys, you don't get this anywhere else. Steve, thank you so much for coming on. We'll see you tomorrow at 11 a.m. You bet, Jacob. Take care. Have a great day. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back.